Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Next conversation this morning is going to be with the president of the National Association of Resident Doctors, Dr. Okwaye Sui Uilawa. And the, of course, uh, with the announcement of a suspension of the NARD strike, doctors are meant to resume work today. Uh, good morning, Doc. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for pronouncing my name well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ojo. I'm from Edo State, so I, I should be able to yes. pronounce it. <laughs> yes. All right. So let, let's get straight into it. There's been, you know, um, the last week, basically, last 10, 11 days, has been pretty tough uh, for doctors, for the federal government, and for patients. Um, but good thing the strike has been suspended. Um, and, of course, doctors are expected to resume work today. So tell us what happened in the meetings that you had, what were the agreements that were signed with the Nigerian government? Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Uyilawa Waisini, President of Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors. It has been a 10 days painful, shameful part that the government has pushed us to go in on the strike. The strike was meant to achieve some basic things. One, one the remunerations for our members to um, to to more light on the on the decay in the health in the health system. The COVID nineteen exposed the health system, and that's why most leaders tend to want to go for medical tourism. As it stands, over um, about a thousand plus of our members that are interns have not been paid salaries. Over 2,000 members of our members on the gift have still not been paid salary. Over 16,000 of the gift mix have not been paid salaries. Over um, 5,000 Naira used for to pay our hazard allowance. You see 5,000, even rep and also seen it have a municipal allowance of 1.2 million or had or had an allowance of 1.2 million. We lost seven and we have lost other members to other illnesses, Lassa fever, Ebola and the rest. We are still being paid five thousand naira. The debt and service insurance have not been paid to any of our members. Those are the items, part of the items that made us to go on the strike. We had a marathon of um, meetings on, on on Friday, first by um, the House of Rep that was um, was called by the Honorable Speaker of the House, Femi Bajia Miller, and it was supervised by the Committee Chairman on, on Health, Dr. Tanko Sunundo. We were able to come at this agreement to say that um, the mandate that the MDTN Chairman to go and Pay the, the doctors that have worked for four months and have not been paid. Also, the budget office and the Ministry of, of Health, we are mandated to go through the list for members in the, on the GIFMIS platform. And they were made to verify the list and make sure that in, they will be paid in this coming week, this week, for their salaries for four months. Also, from there, we went to um, the Ministry of Labor with other stakeholders, where it was agreed that a, that a, a meeting will be conducted today in the Ministry of Finance to try and see ways they can review the 5,000 naira that is paid for the hardship allowance, for the hazard allowance. My apologies, I'm not missing the hazard and hardship. Thank you very much. Okay, um, doctor, let's um, dig in deeper, right? You said, your words, I'm quoting you right now, uh, that um, the strike has been suspended because government gave us good comebacks. That's what you said. But you also yes. said that in four weeks, if your needs are not met, you're going to go back to striking. It's like you're wielding a stick and you're telling government we are watching you and all of that. Is it possible for this to be done in four weeks? So let, let, let's go back to the memory lanes again. For over 10 years, the same thing, apart from the remuneration for, for the House of Stars and those on gift mix, and those 
to have asked government over and over and over again. So it's a reoccurring issue because most times the doctors do not own up or do not honor the memorandum of understanding or MOA. Sorry, the government. But now, because the um, the honourable speaker is intervening, and he has helped us previously, is why we are honouring him. But you cannot just tell me that because we want to honour him, we will not make a caveat and tell them that there's a term line. Because most times before now, when the MOEs, MOUs, or motors are signed, and we are able to suspend the strike. The government tends to go to sleep. See, was another time again when we So that is why the habit was left at a four weeks time. The National Executive Council will be called to come and review what the MOEA has been honored by government. All right. So, so do you trust, you know, uh, the government this time, or you're, you're simply banking on the four weeks? Um, um, threat or four weeks uh, statement that uh, has been given. Do you trust that you know this agreement might be treated different if you've you know spoken about your experience in the last decade? I'm, I'm trusting the uh, the honour to of the house, um, Doctor Femi Pagamela. Mm. Okay, so um, is your grouse just with the federal government or? Do you have a fight with state governments who are owing uh, your member salaries as well? I mean, Abby, I understand who's uh, resident doctors. I, I, I didn't get that question. Please. Okay, so I'm saying, is your fight just with the federal government or with state governments as well? I mean, in some states, some state governments are owing your members, right? The state, the state government are actually worse. Ah. I'll give you examples. Um, in absolute, in Abia state, the governor has refused to pay them salaries for over 20 months. We have sent the delegation to meet him on, on Thursday last week. And what we were told was that and they will only honor the one that is responsible for, that is responsible for those 10 months, and that is what he's going to honor. And he forget that government is a continuum. I'll, I'll talk about Imo State also. They are owing their own salaries for over five over over five months. And nothing has been done about it. We were able to reach out to the um, the governor's forum, which had several times called them and told them that they are, we have issues in your in your state. And up to now they have not answered us for about six, seven months. So I think some of the governors are, are not responsible enough to their citizens. So how how do how then do you explain this to your uh, to doctors in the or to resident doctors basically that you've had agreements with the federal government on you know certain of you know certain um, of the issues that you raised they've made a promise that you know in the next four weeks these things will be answered but you're not sure if the state governments will do same. No, you know, the federal, federal and state are two different things entirely. Yes. And the federal does not um, place rules on states. Yeah, so, so, so they, they, they call it a concordance. So, and we have been able to explain to our members that we still use um, the Honorable Mr. Uh, uh, Speaker to be able to get a way forward and appeal, appeal through the Governor's Forum to be able to talk to the governors of those states. Well, I'm not sure if appealing would work if, if uh, you know, for 20 months. Uh, people have been owed salaries. Uh, that, I don't know if what type of appeals will work in this place. But um, tell me about how you, um, because I, I don't know if all doctors, all resident doctors are on the same page with you um, on this agreement. For those who... Yeah. yeah but, I'll give you an example. I work, I work, in, a, I work in, a, in, in a state institution. I work in Delta State. Delta state. And Delta State Governor... I've been able to make our salaries even better than those in, in, in federal hospitals. And that is why our service delivery is up not there. And the decision to suspend the strike was not just taken by only federal. It was taken by both federal and state. Mm. Okay. And they have confidence in the NOC. 
to do the right thing and make sure can move forward. Okay, so I don't know if Osage is satisfied with the answer, do, but this, it, it looks what I hear you say is that your trust is on the speaker. Uh, Femi I mean, you keep saying the speaker, the speaker, the speaker. So how about some of the resolutions you guys um, have made? You say that you, you're urging the federal government to remove the medical training from the concurrent list to allow for uh, universal implementation of Medical Residency Training Act across the Federation, right? The why is this, why is this so important? Medical Residency Training Act our residency is the program that will run through before we become specialist consultants. And it takes about seven to eight years, depending on the field you are in. And it, they are broken down into different, three different parts. There's the primary, there's the secondary, and there's the before you become a consultant. And each of these um, um, residency training goes through lots of updates of about three to five, um, and you have to write exams. So the medical resident training forms was not budgeted for in 2020, and it took the Speaker of the House for them to raise money for the resident training uh, for 2020. A $4 billion was released for the medical resident training funds then. But however, the amount budgeted for it was 4.4 billion. So that means that most of our members were paid and about a thousand three were not paid. And with the honorable speaker, speaker, we have been told that the supplementary budget will, will be made for those ones to be paid. For those in, for 2021, um, the, um, the National Postgraduate College which is the body in charge of training of all residents in Nigeria, have been told to supplement, to submit the list to the um, Minister of Health and to the, um, the IP's office for onward payment of the resident training fund. Okay, well, um, we have um, about four weeks to go, and hopefully some of the agreements that you had with the government uh, will uh, come uh, to pass, like you've uh, mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I want to know, you know how certain we are about the four weeks deadline. And if these things uh, you know, aren't done as the government has said, um, does that, is that certain that the resident doctors will be going back on strike? We are, we are hopeful that um, we have agreements signed in the... Um, in the House of Rep and in, and in the Labor Office. And the channels put up that uh, most of them have been coming on. I'll give you examples. For the House of that some of them have been, have been paid now. And some of them are already getting a lot as of this morning. I've been told by the Budget Office that um, the list have been sent to them. And they are investigating the, the people on Kismix. And by next few days, they will be through with it and their former salaries will be, will be paid. I'm also aware that a meeting is going to hold today in the Ministry of Finance in a way to try and review the money meant for, for, um, for the hazard allowance. I'm also aware that for the chief medical directors, that there's a list and the form that have been put there for the debt and service insurance and for the local chapters to go and get the list and give you the loved ones of those we lost, for them to feel uh, and the benefits to be claimed for the group life insurance. So that's where we stand now. All right. We'll be um, keeping in touch with you. And uh, hopefully, you know, these things, like you've said, will uh, be done as the federal government has, uh, you know, um, agreed with you. Um, and um, hopefully there wouldn't be another strike. Thank you very much, Dr. Uilawa Okwayesui. Uh, for Thank speaking with us, you. and uh, we Thank wish you a great Monday and a great week ahead. All right, stay with us here on the breakfast plus TV Africa coming up next. Um, yeah, we are going to be talking about the big one, right? <laughs> Governor Baseki says, uh, looks like Nigeria is failing. Uh, we'll tell you more, so just stick with us, right?